Comic books are often filled with mystery men, but who is the superhero whose name itself is a question? Excellent question. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will explore the comic book origins of the question. Oh no, no, no. As with most comic book characters, there are often reimaginings and different versions to a character's past. We've chosen to primarily follow the storyline which unfolded in 1967's Blue Beetle No. 1, which was expanded upon in 1989's Question Annual No. 2, 2007's 52 No. 38 and 48, and 2012's New 52's Free Comic Book Day No. 1. The Question debuted in 1967 as a backup story in Carlton Comics' Blue Beetle No. 1. Readers weren't given much in the way of an origin. Instead, they were presented with a cast of characters and a story, and expected to fill in the blanks as they went along. Apophenia, noun. The tendency to see connections where none exist. Hard-hitting TV reporter Vic Sage was established from the start as a man who saw things in terms of black and white, good and evil. His no-holds-barred approach to reporting angered many of the bigwigs at worldwide broadcasting. Fortunately, Sam Starr, the president of the WWB, was solidly in Vic's corner. It soon became clear that Vic had taken on a second career, as a costumed crime fighter by the name of The Question. Did you come here just to make fun of my work? Readers quickly learned that an associate by the name of Professor Rodor created a special mask that gives Sage the appearance of having no face. They also discover that a special gas that Sage uses cements the mask to his face, while at the same time changing the color of his clothes and hair. Thus, appropriately attired, The Question was ready to pursue Lou Dicer, the criminal behind the city's gambling ring. The Question learned that Dicer had a secret partner and arranged a trap for the two of them. The partner turned out to be Jim Lark, one of the bigwigs at WWB who so disliked Vic Sage's style. True to form, Sage reported the whole truth about Lark on the air, despite the black eye it gave to his own TV station. We're asking questions someone doesn't want answered. When DC Comics revived the question in the 1980s, the character went from being a black and white absolutionist to a zen-inspired character who questioned everything. His origin was related in 1989's Question Annual No. 2. Sage was again presented as a loudmouth with strong views and opinions, as well as a tendency to make accusations without being sure of the facts. What, do you go through my trash? Please, I go through everyone's trash. While going after a suspicious character by the name of Dr. Twain, Sage is contacted by a former professor, Aristotle Rodor. Years before, Rodor had worked with Twain in the development of Pseudoderm, an artificial skin intended for medical uses. Unfortunately, the product turned out to be toxic under certain conditions, so it was abandoned. Rodor, however, believed Twain had set up an operation to sell Pseudoderm to third world countries. In order to get the evidence he needed, Sage had to break into Twain's office. Rodor then made him a special mask made of pseudoderm, as well as a gas to change the appearance of his hair and clothing. In this disguise, Sage went to gather the evidence he needed, and thus began the career of the question. Is the future immutable? Can destiny be changed? Will they allow it? In 2007, a significant change occurred in DC's 52 series, and the mantle of the question was passed to Rene Montoya, a Gotham City detective. Then, in 2012, yet another significant change was made to the question's origin. In a special issue of the New 52, which was distributed as part of that year's free comic book day, three figures were judged for their sins by seven powerful magical figures. Deemed the world's greatest transgressors, one of these people was a redhead who brazenly defied the authority of the judges. His punishment was to forget his identity and to search for eternity for answers. As he was banished from the court, his facial figures disappeared, giving him the appearance of the question, and implying that there would be more to learn about the question's origins in the coming years. The question served as part of the inspiration for the Rorschach character in the landmark Watchmen series and movie. Perhaps because of this, he has often displayed some Rorschach-like characteristics, especially in his TV appearances in Justice League Unlimited and Batman Brave and the Bold. Where will he show up next? That's a good question. Where are we going? Don't ask so many questions. Are you a fan of the question? For more comic book origins, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. So, I think that answered everything. A little too well. Does everything have a sinister motive in your world? Yours too, you just don't know it. Mm -hmm.